With a non accent to the amendment of Section 84 of 8 of the Electoral Act by President Muhammad Buhari, governors have a tough nut to crack in their quest to produce their successor and deliver their states to their preferred presidential aspirants. Vanguard gathered that some governors are lamenting their imminent absence at the primaries unlike in the past. There are also fears that the governors may lose their hold on states, delegates, especially during the presidential primaries. Currently, presidential primaries in the ruling of Progressive Congress APC and the main opposition People's Democratic Party PDP are devising fresh strategies to woo the few delegates that will elect the standard bearers. None ascent to the crucial amendment transmitted by the National Assembly to President Muhammad Buhari on May 13th has many implications. It means that the elected officials, such as the president, governors, lawmakers, local council chairmen, ministers, and other high-ranking political top shots, who used to be super delegates to party conventions in the past, will not be part of the delegates now. It also means that only ad hoc delegates elected for the purpose of the Congresses of the parties in the various states will elect the presidential candidates. The absence of statutory or super delegates means that only 810 delegates will be at the PDP presidential primaries, while that of APC is 2,340 delegates. Given the development, many presidential aspirants who were thinking about consensus candidates have decided to test their strength and popularity in the primaries. Indeed, immediate past Minister of State for Education and Presidential Aspirant on the platform of the All Progressive Congress, Chief Emeka Wanjoba, said yesterday that the Southeast Zone is not working on any consensus arrangement. Aspirant from the Zone had earlier said they would support any of them who wins the ticket. A source told Vanguard yesterday that the emergence of a Southwest consensus presidential candidate in the APC, ahead of the May 29 primaries, is no longer feasible, despite the promise of party leaders in the zone after a meeting in Lagos recently. Speaking on the absence of governors at the primaries, Akwaibom State Governor and PDP presidential aspirant Mr. Udom Emmanuel told reporters after the PDP State House of Assembly and House of Representatives primaries on Sunday said the development was never contemplated. In his words, today I decided to obey the rules of the Electoral Act that disqualifies me from being a delegate. That is why I couldn't go near the venue of the event. That is number one. Number two, I'm made to understand in this life that anything that comes our way, we see it as an act of God. What is happening today is that the party has to use only ad hoc delegates. Nobody can explain. Right from the day the act was signed up till today, nobody detected it. It was detected so late, we can't blame anybody. We can only see it as an act of God and that is how it is meant to be. I keep telling people that no two elections are the same. So this is how God wants it this year. So let's leave it that way. Meanwhile, one job has advanced reason for the high number of presidential aspirants from the Southeast running on the APC platform. With seven aspirants from the Southeast, some stakeholders have felt that the zone should have queued behind one aspirant to strengthen their demand for a power shift. Speaking at a media interface on Monday in Abuja, Wanjiaba said the Southeast would have been more comfortable having more aspirants from the zone so that Nigerians can have a wide range of options to pick from. Presidential aspirants of the Southeast extraction in APC had on Sunday met in Abuja with a resolution to queue behind any of them who clinches the presidential ticket of the party in its forthcoming primaries. Demanding that the ticket be ceded to the zone, the aspirant commended Nigerians for their support and commitment to having a Nigerian president of Igbo extraction. The meeting, which was hosted by Senator Rocha Sokorocha and chaired by Dr. Ogbonaya Onu, had five other aspirants in attendance. They were Chief Ike Obasi, Mo. Mokelu, Senator Ken Namani, Mrs. Uju Kennedy, Ohan Naye, Governor Dave Umayi, and Uwanjoba. However, Uwanjoba said, even though only seven of the aspirants are from the Southeast, party delegates have a sufficient range of options to choose from. 
He said, the Southeast does not want to arrive at a consensus. Southeast wants to work with Nigerians. We're very disappointed. We thought about 10 to 20 people from the Southeast will buy these forms so that we can make a case. When you are making a case, you can make it one way. Let all of us come out, men and women, and say yes, we believe in Nigeria. We have only seven aspirants, and that is very small, but I'm sure that out of these seven, we have those in their 70s, we have those in their 60s, and we have those in their 50s. We have every type you need. Nigeria must have the full breadth of ego diversity. Any type you need, ego people have it. So what we said yesterday was that anyone you choose, we're going to back him or her. The former minister also cautioned Nigerians against electing money bags, saying Nigeria needs a leader with a full grasp of the issue that afflicts the nation, also armed with solutions. I must agree with you that what we have is a monetized political system, but I can assure you that we have a Buhari who was elected and who didn't have money. I'm only presenting myself to you to choose from. I'm not saying I can buy. I'm not sponsored by the oil industry, so the only people who can sponsor me are Nigerians. 3,150 people made contributions and were bought the forms. So I know if Nigerians are willing, once my party selects me, APC will be seeking, speaking to 90% of the demographics of Nigeria, speaking to the 70% of those who are below 50 and who believe it is possible to vote somebody who is 55. Also, the possibility of a consensus candidate emerging from the Southwest on the platform of APC may not be feasible, Vanguard has reported. The source disclosed that the only way a consensus candidate can emerge is if there's an imposition. Vice President Yemi Osibanjo had disclosed that the Southwest leaders and elders will soon reach a consensus on producing a presidential aspirant for the zone ahead of the 2023 presidential election. He said consultations is ongoing daily and is optimistic that the region may reach an agreement soon over the differences among the contestants. Osiban just said, I believe strongly in the wisdom of Yoruba elders and leaders and consultations are always ongoing. I believe that very soon we would resolve whatever differences that exist and would reach an agreement on the way forward. However, a source familiar with the workings of the APC said, the contest is looking tight and aspirant from the zone may not step down for others. The source said, Between you and me, the contest is looking tight. You want to talk to someone about consensus and the aspirants have gone far in meeting with the delegates. As an aspirant, you have an idea of the number of delegates who have assured you of supporting you at the primary. At that point, a consensus arrangement cannot work. That is what I have read and seen. Is it a vice president who has gone round the states of the federation and getting assurances, whether genuine or otherwise, you will ask to step down for someone else? If you have been doing that and someone or groups are asking you to support the consensus, would you agree to it? If you look at the race now, the game is narrowing down. Consensus is not impossible, but... What I'm saying is that it is going to be tight because aspirants have gone far in their campaigns. The source further noted that imposition of any aspirants may affect the fortunes of the party, insisting that only leaders of the APC who are not interested parties can make the move for a consensus. The source said the only way consensus can work in the Southwest is if there's an imposition or if you ask the presidential aspirants to go and choose among themselves. If you say one aspirant should step down for another, it will be difficult. On his part, National Coordinator and Director General of the Asewaju 2023 presidential campaign, Senator Kashim Shetima, described Bola Tinubu as the most suitable and qualified candidate to rule the country among all the aspirants. He said the former governor has sacrificed a lot and contributed immensely to the survival and stability of the party right from the cradle to its infancy and maturity stages obediently. He said Tinubu has the determination and commitment to serve Nigerians diligently and remove the country from the shackles of insecurity and underdevelopment.